This is the first in a series of short films regarding a project to better understand the geographic distributions of earthworms in North America. The project, based at Colgate University in upstate New York, involves researchers at tens of other institutions in the United States and Canada. To learn more about the project and how you could be involved, go to erenweb.org and look for this project under the Research tab. Many of the common earthworms in North America, such as the common nightcrawler, are believed to be exotic to the continent. So, earthworm assemblages often consist of a mix of native and non-native species, and some areas may be inhabited by only non-native species. This is especially true of areas covered by glaciers during the Pleistocene. Some habitats do not currently support earthworms, or at least particular species of earthworms, and areas inhabited by earthworms are often markedly different from uninhabited areas in terms of leaf litter, thickness, and soil vertical structure. We were unable to detect earthworms at this location. Note the thickness and structural complexity of the leaf litter. At this site, we detected many earthworms. Note that the leaf litter from the most recent autumn sits directly on top of the mineral soil. Basically, the litter layer is completely consumed here each year. Our goal in this project is to better understand the factors that limit the distributions of various earthworms in North America. Our approach is to compare the relative importance of biogeographic factors, which can affect earthworm dispersal and habitat quality, which affects earthworm persistence in colonized habitats. The methods of the project include sampling of earthworms, coupled with measurement of biogeographic and habitat characteristics and data analysis. This first video describes the sampling of earthworms. Additional videos describe the other aspects of the study. The first step in any study of earthworms is to select a suitable sampling location. Because humans have a strong influence on dispersal and habitat suitability for earthworms, it is desirable to sample earthworms both near human land use influence, such as in a small urban woodlot, and in more remote areas. Earthworms can be sampled in, in abandoned and active agricultural fields, yards, and virtually any sort of ecological setting. Consider establishing several sites in the typical climax community for your region and additional sites in more disturbed habitats for comparison. Once a site has been determined, the exact placement of the sample should be made arbitrarily to avoid biases in placement. Earthworms are very sensitive to microhabitat differences. Consider tossing a tennis ball in the air at the site. The arbitrary resting place of the ball can become the center point of your sampling arrangement. To capture some of the microsite variability in earthworm populations, participants in this project should use a sampling design that includes three subsamples. Each subsample is located five meters from the center point at the following bearings, zero degrees, 120 degrees, and 240 degrees. A compass can be used to determine bearings, and a tape measure or measured rope can be used to determine distance. Participants in this project may either use a sampling area that is 35 centimeters by 35 centimeters, or an area that is 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters. In either case, a sampling frame should be used to delineate the area, and the size of the sample must be recorded as metadata associated with the earthworm sample. Sampling frames can be constructed from lumber, as shown here, or virtually any other material. Once the quadrat is placed, all vegetation and litter should be removed from the inside of the quadrat to facilitate collection of emergent earthworms. Any individuals present on the surface within the quadrat should be included in the sample. Participants in this project should follow the well-accepted practice of coaxing earthworms to the surface using a spicy mustard solution. Mix the solution from dry powder, available from many spice vendors, including PenzySpices.com. Mix 6 liters of the solution at a concentration of 10 gram powder per liter per dose for the larger quadrat size. For the smaller quadrat size, mix 2 liters of the solution per dose at the same rate. A total of two doses will be necessary to sample a quadrat, meaning that a total of six doses is necessary to sample the entire site, including three quadrats. 
The solution may be prepared in the field and used immediately. It also may be prepared ahead of time, but does become foul with prolonged storage. Apply a single dose of the solution with the sampling frame and wait five minutes for earthworms to emerge. Oh, Anisic worms, yeah, which construct deep now. burrows and can retreat quickly, okay, should be collected with care. Animals should be allowed to come far out of their burrows before they are grabbed. Animals should be pinched at the entrance of their burrow and very slowly pulled out. A second dose should be applied after five minutes, and the quadrat monitored for an additional five minutes. Earthworms should be collected into containers, lined with moist paper towels, and placed in a cooler, especially if the weather is extreme. Animals should be kept moist and cool, but not below freezing, until they are returned to the lab. Investigators may additionally like to use time-constrained searches to find earthworms. In this technique, investigators turn over logs and rocks in the habitat and make note of castings at the surface. Participants in this program may optionally conduct 30 minutes of searching at each site. This can be accomplished with, with two investigators searching for 15 minutes, or three investigators searching for 10 minutes and so on. In the next video in this series, we will discuss techniques involved in preserving and identifying earthworms to species.